Hi guys and welcome to today's video where I wanted to talk about reptile heating and specifically what's the best product to use and what each heater actually does. Now there's quite a few items on the market for doing this job but I wanted to focus on three that seem to crop up the most especially with leopard geckos but technically this information is relevant to all captive reptiles that we keep. So today we'll be looking at the heat mat, the ceramic heat emitter and the deep heat projector. I wanted to look at how bioavailable they are, so how well they mimic the sun and energise our reptiles, how expensive they are and how easy they are to set up. So first we're going to actually tackle the biggest question, how well do they energise our animals? Now to understand this we must look first at how our reptiles would naturally get heat in the wild as ideally we want to mimic that as closely as possible. Now the sun is the main heat and light source for life on earth. If we look at the electromagnetic spectrum, it shows the range of radiation the sun produces from radio waves to gamma rays. Now for heat we want to look at infrared wavelengths. These are longer than visible light and are invisible to the human eye but we feel these wavelengths as heat as do our reptiles. So the sun produces infrared A and B. Once they reach Earth, they are in part reflected back, but also stored and released back as the day cools via convection. Now convection is infrared C. So the sun does not produce this directly, it's more of a byproduct. This is the heat we feel from radiators, phone chargers, and the heat sources we'll be looking at today. So to summarise, the sun produces infrared A and B. This is the prime source of energy. This is then stored and released back as infrared C, which is a secondary source of energy that is less bioavailable. Now we know how heat works in the wild, how does that translate in captivity with the heat sources that are available to us? Well, let's look at heat mats and ceramic heat emitters as they both do quite similar things. So both heat sources emit infrared C through convection. Therefore, they only produce a secondary source of energy, which is not as bioavailable as the heat the animals would naturally encounter in the wild. Now these aren't bad of course, assuming the temperature is set correctly with a stat, the animal should be able to live happily enough, but it's not the same as being out in the sun. So imagine your summer's filled with heat from a radiator versus heat from the sun, you know, you'd, you'd notice a difference. Now some people will use the ceramic heat emitter to heat the air, especially if they live in colder regions and the cold side of the tank gets a little too chilly for the reptiles and that's perfectly fine. Uh, but generally these types of heaters are used to mimic what happens in a wild with a rock. So if you go outside on a hot day and put your hand on a rock or a paving slab, you'll feel that heat. However, as I mentioned, these are not as bioavailable as the sun as they don't produce infrared A and B. And so what you may find is your reptile will spend a lot more time either under the heater or on the mat. And they don't tend to do much else, you know, they won't really explore their tank too much. And in a sense, it's because they're not really fully charged. These heat sources will of course, as we've seen, maintain life. They do the job. But if we want to mimic the wild as much as possible, we need something that will produce infrared A and B. This is where the deep heat projector comes in. Now I've spoken about this heater at length on my channel, especially in the videos where I install the projector into my geckos tanks. And at first there was a lot of uproar because people were worried that geckos wouldn't get this belly heat that everyone goes on about. But when you think about it, there are no heat mats in the wild. So if there are no heat mats in the wild, how are reptiles heating their bellies. So as we discussed, the sun produces infrared A and B, it's then released back as infrared C. This is exactly what happens with a deep heat projector. It almost makes its own heat mat when projected onto a surface, especially rocks and slate. And what I found personally from using it is that geckos are far more active because like the sun, the energy produced by the projector is highly bioavailable. So out of the three, the deep heat projector will energize your reptile the best. Next, we'll look at how much each heater costs. So a heat mat can be anywhere from 12 to 14 pounds. Uh, it really depends on the brand and the size you get, but generally speaking, they're quite inexpensive. 
A ceramic heat emitter uh, from a decent brand, you know, £24 you're sort of looking at, and the deep heat projector is around £20. Now, if you already have an overhead heating fixture in place and you're debating over a ceramic heat emitter or deep heat projector, trust me, go for the projector. Now, of course, each one requires a thermostat, Matte stats aren't too expensive, but when you get into the dimming and pulse proportional stats, that is a bit more, I'm not going to lie. Now, if you're in North America and you're struggling to find a stat for the deep heat projector, because I always use a have a stat dimming stat and you don't get that over there, I have heard that herb stats tend to work well, so that might be something to look into. But on top of all of this, both the ceramic heat emitter and the deep heat projector require fittings. You can use clamp lamps, domes, or a simple fitting with a mount. I actually use all different ones for each tank. These generally aren't too expensive, but of course they add to the overall cost. So out of the three, the heat mat is the cheapest. But please also remember not to buy unregulated heaters or lights from places like Wish or Alibaba. Shops like that, they're unregulated and could be very dangerous. Even if they're a bit cheaper, it is not worth it. Please only go with a trusted brand with well-regulated products. As for which one is easiest to set up, it will probably be the mat again, but if you do happen to already have an overhead lamp fixture in place, it's pretty simple to just screw in a heater. I would say in a vivarium, adding heating equipment is a little more tricky than if you have like a mesh top tank because Overhead heaters are so easy to install in that sense. Ideally, if you're using something like a deep heat projector, you want to make a hide or a basking area out of rock or slate. And though it will certainly heat up a resin hide, it won't maximise the benefits of the projector in comparison to being used on slate and rock. And if you're wondering where I get mine from, because a lot of people ask me where I get my rock and slate from, I usually just get it from the garden centre. So to summarise, the heat mat and ceramic heat emitter will certainly maintain life. If you want to keep things simple, this will do the job. Will it fill your reptile with tons of natural bioavailable energy? No, but it will keep them alive and do a decent job. However, if you want to go to the next level and really try to mimic the wild as much as possible, the deep heat projector is the best technology that we have in the hobby at the moment. Who knows, one day we may have some super sun all-in-one mega bulb. Um, that would be quite cool. I'm gonna, super sun mega bulb, that's mine now. I'm gonna trade that, <laughs> trademark that. But of course, you know, I could go into more detail about recreating the entire spectrum of light and heat in our reptile enclosures and how how that goes on to positively affect our animals but I think Dylan from Animals at Home did a fantastic job at this in a video he did recently so I will link that below so you can check that out anyway I hope this video has helped um I know I get lots of questions about heating there's lots of confusion basically all three of these will do the job of keeping your gecko alive as long as they're controlled you know you're doing a better job than no heating but of course some just a bit better than others but i'll pop helpful links in the description below and uh if you haven't already please subscribe it is much appreciated but thank you for watching guys and goodbye <laughs>